Hey guys, it's Ryan. Uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about tooth trauma, injury to teeth, and specifically the Ellis classification system, which is probably the most notable way to label a tooth that has been traumatized. So tooth fractures can be uh, broken up into a crown fracture, a crown root fracture, or root fracture, depending on what part of the tooth is affected by the fracture. And a crown fracture can be further uh, broken down into uncomplicated, which does not have pulp involvement, or complicated, which is more complicated because it involves the pulp, which makes uh, treatment a little bit more challenging. So the Ellis classification system was um, brought about by this pediatric dentist, G.E. Ellis, who in 1950 was the first to promote a universal classification system for dental injuries. And his classification system was unveiled in uh, 1970. Now an infraction is um, outside of his classification system, but I wanted to start with it because it's a very simple fracture. It's actually incomplete because it doesn't have a clean break of tooth structure. Um, it's an incomplete crack, as you can see here, and uh, there's really no uh, treatment necessary because there's no tooth structure that's lost here. Um, it's important to note that the pictures that I'm using in this presentation are of molars because I, I like this image, but remember that tooth trauma is much, much more common in anterior teeth. So Ellis class one refers to an enamel fracture, a fracture of tooth structure that only involves the enamel. Uh, the tooth is non-tender, and there, it may have rough edges depending on how the fracture uh, travels through the tooth. Uh, treatment of a class one fracture involves smoothing any rough edges and restoring lost tooth structure. And if the patient or their parent has the tooth fragment available, you can just bond that back on to the tooth. Now Ellis class two, as we get more and more complicated, involves enamel and the dentin layer. So dentin is now exposed to the oral cavity. And so you have a fast track via dentinal tubules to the pulp. So you can imagine that this tooth would be tender to both touch and air and those sorts of things. Um, and the yellow dentin may be visible. Now treatment of a class one also involves restoring lost tooth structure and rebonding that um, fragment or uh, creating a more definitive restoration with composite or something like that. Now Ellis class three, we now involve um, the enamel, the dentin, and the pulp. So one easy way to remember this is that Ellis class one involves one layer, two involves two layers, and three involves all three layers of the tooth. And Ellis class three, um, this tooth will also be tender to touch and air because the pulp is exposed. So you may see uh, a pink or red color or even blood visible, uh, depending on how much of the pulp is exposed. So treatment of a class one involves vital pulp therapy or root canal therapy, depending on the stage of development of the tooth, if it has an open versus a closed apex, and the time between the accident and treatment, how fast that patient can be seen. If the tooth is mature and it has a closed apex, root canal therapy is probably your best bet. If it has an open apex and it's an immature tooth, then you might be able to get away with vital pulp therapy, or if not, um, apexification to close off those apices. Ellis class four is a little bit different. It's a, referring to a traumatized tooth that has become non-vital, and it may or may not involve actual loss of tooth structure. And treatment for a class four uh, would be a root canal therapy for a closed apex tooth, apexification for an open apex tooth. Now class five is a little bit different here. We have the socket and the tooth was avulsed out of the socket, so avulsion, um, sometimes refers to just general trauma if you avulsed a ligament or something. You're uh, forcefully popping something out 
forcefully removing something. And so um, that also refers to the tooth here in this case. One easy way to remember this is that avulsion has this V in it, and it matches up with a class uh, 5 of the Roman numeral V. Um, so if you have an avulsed tooth, the ideal situation would be to re-implant it, put it back in its socket immediately uh, in order to improve healing of the periodontal ligament and to prevent root resorption. EADT stands for extra alveolar dry time, and that refers to the amount of time a tooth has been dry out of the mouth. And if it's been out of the mouth and not sitting in a, um, a good solution for more than one hour, that tooth has a poor prognosis. It's likely not to heal up. It's likely to not um, be a vital situation. Um, optimal storage for that tooth, so it's not dry out of the mouth, is something called Hanks Balanced Salt Solution, which is a tissue culture medium. Um, so that would be the ideal situation to store a tooth in if it's lost um, in the mouth, lost from the mouth. Now, when you're seen by the dentist, in this case, the dentist would carefully remove the clot, uh, gently irrigate the socket with saline, reimplant the tooth, and then place a uh, semi-rigid splint for about seven to ten days, um, prescribe antibiotics and maybe a tetanus booster. And then after those seven to 10 days, do a root canal therapy for a closed apex, apex of vacation for an open apex tooth. Now Ellis class six refers to any root fracture, which may or may not involve loss of the crown structure. Um, prognosis is better as the fracture approaches the apex. So if you're in the apical third of the root, that is a better fracture than say if you were up here near the bifurcation. A horizontal root fracture is has a much better prognosis than a vertical root fracture, which is almost always um, almost always requires an extraction. A non-displaced tooth is a better sign than a displaced one, and an oblique root fracture is generally better than a transverse root fracture like here. Um, so a vital tooth, you would uh, splint and observe. Um, if you had a coronal segment that became non-vital, you would have to apicoectomy and apexification. So you'd apicoectomy, remove this apical portion, and then apexification to close the wide lumen of the pulp canal. And very, very, very rarely do both the coronal and apical segments become non-vital, in which case you'd have to root canal the coronal portion, apicoectomy the apical portion. Ellis class, si uh, class 7 involves a displacement of a tooth without fracture of the crown or root. So we're not talking about any sort of fracture here. The tooth is just moving or being dislocated from the socket. So these injuries can refer uh, include the following. Concussion, which just like a blow to the head, it's going to hurt. So there's no displacement. The tooth has normal mobility, but temporarily the periodontal ligament is very sensitive. Subluxation refers to increased mobility, but no, again, no displacement. So this would be like a loosening, loosening of the tooth in the socket. Luxation refers to actual dislocation. I remember that because um, this luxation sounds like dislocation. And um, it, it could be extrusive, which would be uh, coronal displacement of the tooth, as shown in this picture. Lateral would be uh, in the lateral direction, any, um, any direction other than axially, up and down. Or intrusive would be the apical displacement, the opposite of what is shown here. Generally, um, the, the um, lateral or the extrusive has the best prognosis only about 65% of cases become necrotic. Lateral comes in second place with 80% necrotic, and intrusive is last place, 96% necrotic in terms of a vital, in terms of having a vital pulp at the end of the day from one of these injuries. 
and the pulpal outcome is generally more favorable for an open apex due to increased blood flow. Ellis class 8 refers to a complete fracture of a crown um, and or its replacement. And Ellis class 6 refers to a fracture of a deciduous or primary tooth. So now just a couple questions for you. Um, Ellis classified tooth avulsion in which of the following class? So class 2, class 3, class 5, or class 7? And so if you'll remember, uh, one of the ways we remembered this was that avulsion had this V in the word, which matches up with the Roman numeral class 5. Question number two, which of the following is considered the best storage media for an avulsed tooth? Is it Hanks Balance Salt Solution, water, saliva, or glycerin? And so generally, um, if we can get a hold of it, HBSS is considered the best storage media for a tooth that has been lost from the mouth. And question three, what is the class of fracture in this image, this x-ray image here? Is it class three, class four, class five, or class six? And the answer, because it's a root fracture and a horizontal root fracture at that, we would classify this as a LS class six fracture. All right, guys, well, I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. Leave a like, leave a comment if you have any uh, recommendations for a next topic, and I hope to see you guys next time.